Welcome back to GDT Tech Reviews. In this video we are going to do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best home theater speaker systems 2022. So let us get started and the review based on our studies and small research. If you have any personal suggestion do let us know in the comment section. If you are for the first time don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon for more videos. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use to for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. So let's get started. The Concert 92 series consists of two floor standing speakers, the C97-2 and C95-2, two stand mounters, the C93-2 and C91-2, a center speaker, the C9 Ken-2, and a dedicated, dipole surround speaker, the C9 Soar-2, each with hybrid composition conical cone, HCCC, main drivers and silk dome tweeters. Those HCCC drivers boast a stiff compliant stiff, SCS, sandwich construction that apparently results in a performance that's clean, clear and resonance free, even when the speakers are being driven hard, while the silk dome tweeter is said to be crisp without sounding harsh and, thanks to an anti-diffraction waveguide, less restricted to a sweet spot than many speakers. Jamo has also clearly put a lot of thought into how the Concert 92 series speakers look, with magnetic grills, satin painted MDF baffles with a rounded finish, polished chrome logos and cast metal stabilizer feet all featuring. The standard finish is furniture grade, scratch resistant black ash, but if you're quick you can alternatively specify a limited edition white oak version. The Sony Hyde A9 consists of four wireless speakers and a base unit that connects to your TV while wirelessly communicating with the four speakers. This base unit measures 150mm x 150mm and has two HDMI ports on the back, along with power, Ethernet, and 3.5mm ports for connecting to newer Sony TVs. A USB port is also present but is only used for servicing the unit. Each of the four speaker measures 313mm x 160mm HXW, with a rounded front and a flat back for mounting easily on walls. While the four speakers communicate wirelessly to the base, they do need to be powered up and connected to an outlet on your wall. For this reason, the speakers look better sitting on a table or stand than being wall-mounted, as you'll have electrical wires running from them to your outlet. They're also on the bigger and bulkier side which is another reason you'd want to put them on a stand instead of the wall. Sony only makes the Hyde A9 available in a light grey color even though black seems to the color preferred by most audio enthusiasts. DevTech unveiled their demand series of small yet elegantly designed and technology-packed bookshelf speakers at the 2018 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. There are currently three models, the D7, D9, and D11 with the D11 being the largest. All are two-way speakers with a polymer cone mid-woofer covering the bass and mid-range frequencies, and an aluminum dome tweeter reproducing the highs. The demand series are not bipolar as they lack drivers on their rear panels. The two larger models have passive radiators to extend its base while the smallest uses a traditional reflex port. Piano black cabinets, lightly textured aluminum front panels and thin, magnetically attached grills give the demand series a modern and handsome appearance. Remove the front grille and the first thing one notices is the location of the tweeter. Ordinarily, it would be right above the woofer, at its 12 o'clock position. On the demand series, the left tweeter is a little closer to the left edge of the enclosure, at around 11.45. The right tweeter is a little closer to its right edge at roughly 12.15. According to Definitive, the asymmetry reduces the effects of sound bouncing off the corners of the enclosure and results in smoother high frequencies. This also means the D7, D9, and D11 are sold as mirror-imaged pairs. Labels on the back above the speaker terminals indicate left and right channels. The S807s form the front left and right channels here, and they're effectively an upgrade on those S805s. Though at first glance they add just a second 12.5 cm woofer below the same 25 mm soft dome tweeter, the S807s also offer a neat solution to Atmos integration. Slot the feet of a pair of S8 ATM speakers into the holes on the top of the cabinet, however, 
and that top pair of inputs connect directly to the height channels on your AV receiver, sending the signal through the S807s and leaving the Atmos speakers clean of any terminals of their own. Though the traditional practice of wiring up each speaker individually to many might not appear that messy, it's all in line with Jamo's intention to mix style with substance and practicality in the Studio 8 range, and that objective is again evident in this package's center speaker. As it's tapered toward its front end, the S81 Ken doesn't sit squarely on a traditional speaker stand, as we would usually set a center channel up. Instead, two small wooden legs grow from beneath each 10 cm woofer, one either side of the tweeter, which make it simple to position on a rack or cabinet already below your TV or projector screen. And they offer some isolation too, of course. So the only speaker stands necessary are those to elevate your surround pair of stand mounters. As their name suggests, the S801s are similar in form to their center speaker sibling, they each sport one of the same 10 cm woofers, and echo the look of the S807s. But on rather a smaller scale. All that's missing, then, is the subwoofer, and the S808 is an easier sub to miss than most. With a 20 cm driver powered by 100 watts of Class D amplification, it's a wonder how Jamo has fitted so much rumble into a cabinet so slim. At only 176 mm deep, it sticks out no further into the room than the front channels. The company even suggests storing it under the sofa, you don't get much tidier than that. And if we were rediscovering our soft spot for Jamo following the stereo performance of its S805 speakers, we've grown only fonder having spent a good while in the company of this S807 HCS package. The Vizio SB46514F6 is a good overall soundbar that can be used for a lot of different content. This soundbar has a 5.1.4 speaker configuration and supports Atmos, which results in an immersive listening experience with Atmos movies. Its stereo audio reproduction is pretty accurate as well and most people will be satisfied with how loud it can get. However, there are some pumping and compression artifacts at max volume. Overall, the bar is very versatile and has a lot of connection options, but the satellite speakers aren't wireless like some other setups and need to be wired to the subwoofer. The Vizio SB46514F6 is good for mixed usage. Its overall performance is good and is suitable for a wide variety of content. Whether you want to listen to music, podcasts, audiobooks, or have an immersive experience when watching a movie, this soundbar can do it. It can get loud enough for most people, and it sub-packs a good amount of bass too. The Vizio 46 inches 5.1.4 is mostly covered by a metal grill, while its back is made from plastic. It has two metal plates on the side. Its style is fairly similar to the Vizio SB36512F6, but it looks a bit more high-end thanks to the lack of cheap fabric. The subwoofer of this soundbar setup is bigger than most others we've reviewed so far. It follows the same design as the bar and the satellites. The satellite speakers follow the same overall design as the rest of the setup. They have a grill covering the speakers with two metal plates on the sides. The SB46514F6 is a rather large bar and won't fit between the legs of most 55 inches TV stands. On the upside, it's not too tall, so it won't block the bottom part of your screen unless your TV sits flush on the table. The subwoofer of this soundbar is noticeably bigger than the others we've reviewed so far. It's a large cube and is bigger than a standard desktop PC.